Good morning. This is Doris Sorrell again, uh, with the privilege and an honor to come to you once again uh, this, mor this morning to teach you about God's Word and something that's been on my heart for quite a while. Um, but because of the times, uh, the time is short, and uh, uh, I have to come to you from a different perspective as most people because of what God has shown me and what the things that God has called me to do. And so uh, I will be coming to you with an urgency, a message that is very urgent. It, and God put an urgency on me years ago, and it's just getting stronger and stronger. And we are, this is the last days of October 2020. We are in uh, an election uh, year. And I just want to say to you that no matter who gets in the White House, what man gets in the White House, that um, we are in for some times uh, such as we've never seen before because it is written. It is written. And there is a savior that wants to save you. And many people will be looking for him. Uh, and I'm here as one of his servants to tell you about him. God revealed some things to me. Uh, he has supernaturally that I have not shared because I don't like um, a lot of hoopla. Uh, and uh, so, uh, but the time has come to to share those things simply because people are dying left and right. And I don't know uh, whether I'm going to be here to share them if I don't do it now. Um, and these are supernatural things. Uh, and they, uh, I believe that God did these things to me and showed these things to me to share so that some might believe. And so that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, and it's not everything. Of course, you can't share everything, but I'll show enough in hopes that some will believe. Because we all need a savior and we all don't understand that we need a savior. And, and most of us, and really most of us, is, doesn't understand why we need a savior. And the reason is because there's more to life than you see. There is an afterlife. And uh, in that afterlife, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And when you leave, you're going to go to one place or another. And what's going to determine where you go is, did you believe what Jesus Christ said, what he came to do and what he said? So I'm going to start uh, sharing some of the word of God. Then I'll share with you some of my testimony and then we'll go back to the word of God. And I pray that through those uh, two things, the word of God and the words of my testimony, that some of you might believe. Amen. So we'll go with our first scripture to Acts 4 and 12. Acts 4 and 12. Like I said, many people don't think they need a savior. And that's because you're blind. I understand you, you cannot see. The only reason I'm able to see now is because God has revealed some things to me, which I'm going to reveal to you today. And you have a choice whether to believe them or not. Amen. Acts 4 and 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none of the name given under heaven, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. None of the name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So many of us are looking at a man, this man or that man, to save us. And God says there's no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved from the wrath that is to come and the terror of dying without God. That's what we're saying for. So let's look at, I want to show you that in Psalm 73. In Psalm 73, this was a Psalm of Asaph. And he found himself, he was a man of God. He found himself jealous at the riches uh, that the wicked had. Found himself jealous at the riches of the wicked, wicked men that didn't believe God. And, and Asaph found himself, he said, truly in Psalm 73, 1, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well not slipped, for I was envious at the foolish 
when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He started looking at what they had and what he didn't have and didn't realize that he had it all when he had God. And then he says, we'll jump over to 73 verse um, 17 until he goes on and on. He talks about the wicked and what they got and what they, they don't have to go through that he has to go through and they don't have to go through. And then he said down here in 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. See, it's all about the end. What are you going to do when you die? What are you going to do when you die? Why do you think Jesus came? He came so that you would have a savior to save you from what's on the other side. Amen. Then I understood their end. He's, and this is a description of hell, what I'm going to show you here. Verse 18, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakens, oh, so, O oh Lord, when thou awakens, thou shalt despise their image. Now, this looks like God sent someone to hell. No, God sent a savior. See, God knows what's on the other side waiting for you because of Satan. So God sent a savior. And when you reject the savior, this is what you get. So here, uh, God showed Asaph the end of those that don't believe. It says, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Slippery. Slip is a forward motion. You can't go back. Once you head toward hell, you, there's no going back. Thou castest them down into destruction. There's destruction down there. Your life, when you don't believe what the Bible tells you about Jesus being Savior, you're headed for destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? Desolation, which when I share my... Uh, testimony with you, what God showed me, you'll see some desolation. As in a moment, just desolation, just desolate. That means absolutely no hope. All hope is gone. As in a moment, just like that. Slippery, as in a moment. All this happens instantaneously. They are utterly consumed with terrors. Utterly consumed with terrors. That means there's no anything but terror. And when you see my test, hear my testimony, you'll know just a part of that. As a dream, when one awakens, so, O Lord, when thou awakens, thou shalt despise their image. Thou shalt despise their image. God will despise what happened to you. He hates that. He doesn't want that to happen to you. God loves you. He sent his son to save you. He loves, he, he knows every hair on your head. That's why he sent a savior. But if you, if you die without him, without salvation, He's going to despise what you became. That image is going to be evil and satanic. That's what he's trying to save you from. And so um, we want to go to John 8 and 24. And it's all about believing. I will be sharing my testimony today to help some of you believe. And I'm sharing it today because I, I don't know how much time I have left. I'm 71. Uh, uh, this is a day where people are, are alive today, this morning, and, and dead tonight. I don't know. I hope I got 20, 30 more years. But I don't know. It's some years ago the Holy Spirit impressed on me to teach like it was my last day. And so that's why when I give you scriptures, you have a lot of scriptures. Because I don't know what I'll ever be able to teach again. And that's why I'm giving my testimony today. Because uh, the times are urgent. It's urgent. And so go with me again to John 8, 24. I don't want you to die in your sin. God doesn't want you to die in your sin. He, he doesn't want it more than me. He's the one that called me and did this to me. What you're looking at, God did this to me. <laughs> Amen. John 8 and 24. It says here, and uh, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. I said, therefore, unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, 
you shall die in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you're going to hell. That's the end of it. And so he doesn't want you to die in your sins. That is why he came. That's why uh, uh, God sent him. Let's go to Philippians 2. I want you to see something that every single human being is going to know. Some of us know on this side, and some of, of us are going to know, unfortunately, on the other side. But we're all going to know. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee, every single knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. So uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Philippians 2. Wherefore, God ha also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That 10, that at the name of Jesus, that every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. That's not just human beings, but that other created things shall bow to the name of Jesus. And I'll show you in my testimony how God revealed that to me. And so I'm going to uh, take you to 1 Corinthians 1 and uh I don't know. Oh, I used to say I don't know why God chose me. I don't. I, I am a chosen vessel. God ordained me, and uh, He is the one that uh, put His word in me. Amen. Yes, I had to study like everybody else, but God did a supernatural thing and poured His word in me and uh, sanctified me and used me. And I used to say, I don't know why he did that, but I, I do. I found it in the word of God. It's in 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. 1 Corinthians 1, and it starts in uh, uh, verse 26. Uh, he called me. And uh, everything from 26 to 29 uh, pertains to this woman. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are nothing or not to bring to nothing things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. So let's look at all of these. I fit every single category. God has chosen the foolish things of the world. I was such a fool. I was a silly woman. I fit right in that category uh, where it says that men creep into silly women's houses. I was one of those very foolish. God chose me to confound the wise. And God chose the weak things of the world. I was weak to confound the, the mighty. I was weak, so weak, I couldn't protect myself from my oppressor. I was weak, but God chose me. And base things of the world, that means the lowly, the low down, the dirty, the ones that did low down, dirty sins. I was that. I did some awful sins. Amen. I was a fornicator, an adulterer. It was awful what I was. God chose me. He chose the base things of the world and things which are despised. And yes, I was despised. I'm still despised. Some people still despise me, <laughs> but that's okay. God chose me. He chose the despised things which are despised. That means that people hate. I have people right now that hate me. Unbelievable. Not because of what I used to be, but because of what I am now. Has God chosen? Yes, and things which are nothing. I was nothing, but God chose me to bring to nothing things that are, and why that no flesh should glory in his presence. So when I'm about to reveal some of these testimonies to you, and I want you to understand this is why God chose me, because I was foolish, I was weak, I was base, 
I was despised and I was nothing. But God chose me to use me so that no flesh, no flesh could boast and say, I did this and that other. I know full well it was God that did this to me. And God is using me to save some of you. And so I'm going to share with you uh, some of my testimony. Uh, it's all about believing God. Amen. And so I'll start with, uh, I had an encounter with God. He actually literally, this was uh, after uh, an oppressor that was too strong for me. Uh, God delivered me from my oppressor. I had a visitation before I was born again or, or accepted the Lord. I had a visitation from God in my own living room. He, he was in the kitchen and I was laying on a couch in a fetal position crying because I had uh, already, I had bought a gun and I was going to uh, kill my oppressor. And I was weeping because I had come uh, so close to uh, hurting another human being. Well, uh, anyway, the police had come and picked the oppressor up and it's a long testimony. I'm not going to go through it all because I want to get through some other stuff here. But anyway, I had the first encounter was Jesus Christ. I knew him. I recognized him. I didn't see him physically, but I knew him. He picked my spirit out of my body and placed me in his chest and said, don't worry. I will always take care of you. I was comforted. And he, 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 uh, he kept me there for a little while. And then he placed me back into my body. Again, I was on the couch in a fetal position, facing the back of the couch, weeping. Uh, and he placed me back in my body and he left three, he deposited three things in me to do. To turn on Christian radio, to learn how the body works from the cell level, and something about photography. And so uh, that's what he did in me. And in the ensuing couple of years, I tried in my best little way I knew how to obey that. So I was turning on Christian radio and I, I went back. I was an LVN at the time. I went back to school to learn how the body works at cell level. So I knew that was microbiology. And so I took a class in microbiology that led to me becoming an RN. And uh, the something about photography that may be what's happening right now, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, and so it, the second encounter with the Lord, uh, I was driving to work over to the, the Yolo Causeway, going to work. I was working on a Sunday and I had was doing what God had told me to do to turn on Christian radio. And I had on a station and a woman preacher was preaching out of Isaiah 61. Uh, set the captives, open the prison gates and set the captives free. And when she prayed that, boom, from the top of my head all the way through my body, something happened. First, I saw the sky, the clouds, the, the sky was blue with beautiful white clouds. And it did a, a thing, which uh, now I know is, 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 is like a quickening. And uh, I didn't know what it was then, but that happened first. And then all of a sudden that, and from the top of my head through the sole of my feet was great peace and joy. And you, I can't even, it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit actually. And so uh, I drove on, I was able to drive on in to work and even able to work eight, uh, uh, eight, eight hours. But when I got there, I wanted to call someone that I knew that I thought was uh, godly because I didn't go to church. Uh, uh, someone that was godly and all I could think of was my sister and she uh, because they sang in the choir at their church and so I called her and I was boohooing and crying and just, just crying 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 and, and my sister says my sister Gloria she says say something say something and I, all I could say y'all was G -g -g God L -l 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 love and she said all right then <laughs> and so I went on to work and uh, that lasted, that beautiful, beautiful thing lasted for seven days. It slowly, slowly went away until I was back to my old self where I just uh, was just hateful and hated and all that. But it left something in me. Uh, I don't know what that was, but I want it. That's what it left in me. And so the uh, next time, now, uh, 
I did become a Christian, and this is too long of a story to tell you everything, but God did eventually get me through uh, my 14-year-old daughter. Well, she said she was 12, 12-year-old daughter. She went to church first, and then God eventually uh, got through there. But uh, the the next here's just some of the things that God has spoken to me. God has spoken to me with one word, and God has spoken to me in... Um, uh, sentence. Uh, here's a few of the one words that he spoke to me. He said, one time he said, liturgy. I had no clue what that meant. I had to go look it up. One time he said, remnant. One time he said, purity of heart. These are different times that God spoke to me. Now, this was in my heart. God has spoken to me. I've heard the audible voice of God. Um, I heard the audible voice of God one day when I was at work and I saw this person that was in uh, dying from something they had done to their own body. And I asked God a rhetorical question. Why, Lord, do people do the things that they do? It was just rhetorical. I didn't expect an answer. And God spoke to me. He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. I had never heard that before. And so I couldn't wait to get home after uh, work to uh, run to the Bible and find it. And it was right there. It was right there in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Another uh, uh, thing that God spoke to me, now this was not uh, audible, but God spoke to me one day I was praying. I had been asked, I'm a baby Christian now, still a baby Christian. I had been asked to be on the board of, because uh, I was volunteering down at one of the homeless places. And they asked me to be on their board of directors. Well, you know, I didn't have time for that. I had children. I had four children. I was just a brand new Christian. I just wanted to help, you know. And so I knew that the answer was no. I barely had time to do what I was, was doing, you know. I had four children, was going to school. <laughs> And, um, and so, but I didn't know how to tell him no. So I just told him I pray on it. And so I prayed and I didn't hear anything from God and excuse me, I prayed and I didn't hear anything from God. It was like when Paul said that he prayed three times. And so I prayed a third time and I did hear from God and he spoke this in my heart that my, uh, uh, my eyes are over the righteous and my ears are attent unto their prayers. I heard that, and uh, I, I went and looked it up. I believe it's in Peter, and uh, I, and so what I took from that was I already knew the answer. God, see, God's not going to give you an answer that you already know. You don't play games, you know. And that He heard me, but I already knew what to do. You know, He doesn't really answer you when you already know what to do, you know. And so that's how I took that. Then there was one time that God chastened me. And uh, I was witnessing, I was having a Bible study with a brother, a young brother and a young sister. Everybody acknowledged the call that was on my life. They wanted the word. And a young brother and sister came to my house. We had already set up a certain time to come. They were engaged and they wanted to know about that. And so I was willing to teach them. And I had on a, which was not really a, a um, well, it was a house dress. It was sleeveless. There was no breath showing. It was like spaghetti straps and it was form fitting. And they came and I didn't change my clothes. It was long to the floor, but it was form fitting. Let's put it that way. And I, and I taught them like that. And I apologize. I said, oh, well, you guys came quick and oh, I didn't have change. But you know, God looks on the outward appearance. You know how people say that. Uh, he looks at the heart and, uh, and not his outward appearance. Well, after they left, God allowed me to teach them. And after they left, I went in my bedroom and I heard the audible voice of God. And the audible voice of God chastened me. And it was not nice. It was uh, horrible and terrible. And he said, I called you to holiness, not uncleanness. Now, it wasn't like that it was worse than that, way worse. It was audible and it came down to me and I fell on my bed again in a fetal position and I just trembled and I was shaking and I didn't know, uh, I was scared to look up. I was, and I, 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 lay, I don't know how long I laid there, but I laid there for a long time and finally when I looked up, it was with one eye. And I, I, that's, that's how. For you people that are playing with God, please understand. Please understand that this Bible is real and this God is real. He's wonderful. 
And I was afraid to look up. And I looked up with one eye and I said, Jesus, I was scared. And then the love, a wave of love came over me. God chastened me and then he loved on me. And I'm telling you that God is something else. He's real. I'm telling you these things about my testimony so that you might also believe and be saved. Amen. And that's the only reason I'm telling you these things. I don't want no book. I don't want no this. I don't want no that. I don't want to go on the, on these uh, shows, uh, um, supernatural, this, that, and I don't want any of that. I'm just sharing my testimony so that some of you might believe because the time is urgent. The time is now to believe and be saved. Amen. And so, um, anyway, so um, the one time I was fasting, and now this is very weird. I haven't shared this to, with very many people. I don't even know if I shared it with my children. But one time I was fasting. I was on a three-day fast, and I literally heard. Now, this is strange, even to me. <laughs> I literally heard angels. I heard warfare. I heard it. I didn't see anything. And I was in my bedroom and it was outside my, um, outside of my, um, bedroom wall. I heard, I could tell that it was big, the wings flapping and I heard clanking like swords, literally heard that like swords and, and shields. I heard all of that. Now that's strange. I can't explain that to you. I can only tell you what I heard and I knew they were fighting over me and so praise the Lord uh, well you see who won and I'm sure that they fight every day over not just me but all of us we don't understand what's going on in the spirit realm praise God those ain't God's angels fighting devils okay and then uh, I want to share with you this is the last thing I'm going to share with you well uh, one time I was sitting up in bed just not too long ago maybe a couple of years ago and uh, I was watching TV. I wasn't particularly spiritual, <laughs> you know, like reading or praying. Uh, and I heard the Lord say, the battle will be won on the knees. And I turned over to my husband. I said, did you hear that? The Lord said, I'm, no, I didn't say that. Did you hear that? I said, the Lord just spoke to me and, and said, the battle will be won on the knees. And he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. But, you know, I'm used to that. <laughs> so praise the Lord. But uh, he told me that. Uh, but this I want to share with you, and I, I can't possibly tell you everything. I'm just trying to tell you a few little things so that you might believe. And so, but I do want to tell you this about three encounters that the Lord gave me of the devil and evil. And uh, the first encounter was, and I was on all three of these encounters, I was waking out of my sleep from these. The first time I was waking and there were hands choking me. Literally, and I wasn't dreaming. They were literally choking me. And I was pretty strong in the Lord, and I just felt like, in the, I said, Jesus, you know, I'm fighting. You know, I've been taught that I'm a warfare, and I got power of all the power of the devil, and nothing shall any by any means harm or hurt me. So I just said, Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, the hand did just like this. I mean, I heard, I didn't see this. I only felt it. I'm trying to explain to y'all that there's some spiritual things going on. The spiritual world is real. And God allowed me these three to expose these three things that I'm sharing with you. So I would know what's going on so that I eventually would share it to you. And so at the name of Jesus, the hands unclenched my neck and into outer darkness. The second time something happened was uh, I was woken up with by eyes and they were... Uh, almond shaped and they were red and they were the epitome of hatred and evil. They were epitome of evil and hatred. They hated me. I felt the hate. They was just right in my face and I felt the hate. And again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the warfare. I got power all the way. And I said, Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, they just, they just right into outer darkness, the eyes. They just dissipated right into outer darkness. Now, the third time, I woke up with a dread. It was a coiling. It was going down into my ear. It was like a whirlwind. And it was going, I could see the whirlwind here, but it was a tiny little part. You know how whirlwind is like a um, small part, and then it gets wider. And it was going down in my ear. 
it was easing down in my ear. And I was utterly terrified. I felt desolation. What I explained to you in Psalm 73, I felt desolation coming into me. I, I know now why people are mentally deficient. Some people have lost their minds. Some kind of way they, uh, uh, this could explain some of that. But this was going down into me. It was coiling down and it was like sneaking down in me. And I could not call on the name of Jesus. I was utterly terrified. I couldn't call on the name of Jesus. But out of the pit of my belly, the Holy Spirit that dwells in me said, J, just J. At the J, and what he was saying is Jesus. But at the J, the thing reversed the coil and in the outer darkness. At the J. So two things was revealed to me through those three encounters. That the devil is real. Everything the Bible says about it is real. Hell is real. Uh, Satan is real. Uh, Lake of fire is real. It's all real. And the power in the name of Jesus. If I had not had a savior, I would have been walking around the streets like some of these other people, just as crazy as a Betsy bug, out of my mind. But at the, at the absolute, at the J, the thing reverses coil, and, into, and you can hear it, into outer darkness. Amen. So now I share those uh, revelations with you. Oh, one more I want to share. Um, I guess a few years back, I was in this house, and I was walking just in my, just from one room to the, to the other and God touched me and he touched me to now I'd already had the baptism of the Holy Spirit I knew how that was uh, this was a touch of his glory why I don't know because I'd already been baptized in the Holy Spirit but he touched me with his glory and it was so wonderful I mean every cell in my body was alive with love and peace and joy and some other things I can't even describe and it was, I saw why every human being was created. I felt why every human being was created. I even said, if the junkies only knew that all they're searching for is you. I mean, I just, everything. I know why we're created for the glory of God. It was so wonderful. Now y'all understand I had children and grandchildren that I love. I was not yet married to my husband, but I had children and grandchildren that I just adored. But I was ready to leave everybody. And so, <laughs> so I found myself walking past that place in my house, hoping that God would touch me again. I really like that. I mean, anybody would. Uh, it's something I can't even describe with the human language, how wonderful that was. It's just a taste of heaven. And that's just a taste. That's just a taste. Amen. And so I found myself walking past here, and, but he didn't do it again. See, everything that God did for me, he did of his own accord, not because I was, I want to see something super. Now he did this, he done this. And I'm going to share with you in the Bible. He did it like uh, uh, why he did that. And so anyway, so I'm walking past there and I, I couldn't get that again. And so I told the Lord, I said, why? Why would you show me that and leave me here? I couldn't understand why in the world would he show me that and leave me here? I was ready to leave everybody. Just like Paul said, it's better for me to leave uh, to be with the Lord, but it's better for me to stay for y'all's sake. And that's why he left me here. That's why he showed me all of that. All these encounters uh, was for you. First, they were for me. And then they were for you so that you might believe. The Bible says the, these sufferings that we are going through now, they are not even to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us that love the Lord Jesus and that are saved. There's nothing down here. Like Asaph said, he, he, he just was jealous of what they got. He said, until I went to the sanctuary and I saw their end. Well, God showed me the other end, the glory that shall be revealed in us. There's nothing on this earth. I can't wait to get to heaven. Amen. I'm here because God is using me for other people. I'm ready. I could fly away and just go on to heaven right now. But God is using 
this testimony, not so that I could get on some encounter show or write some book or something, but for someone else to believe that all of this is true. And that's another thing that God revealed me. One day I was riding, riding down the road, again, not being particularly spiritual. I just driving down the street, coming from the store or work. I don't know where I was coming home. And uh, uh, again, the clouds did their little thing. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. And it kind of felt like the Lord was going to snatch me right at that moment, but he didn't. But he spoke to me and said, every word is true. And that was to my spirit. It wasn't audible. I've only heard the audible a couple times. But every word is true. And then he just kind of settled me back down in there. And so, uh, and he put, put that urgency in me. And that was years ago. And it just is getting more and more urgent uh, all the time. And that's why I've revealed these things to you. And uh, so I want to go on and show you about believing even the devils believe let's go to james 2 the devils believe you know when they heard when they heard uh jesus they had to bow their knees in my testimony at the name of jesus the hands had to let go at the name of jesus the eyes had to flee and when the holy spirit thank god from the pits of my stomach said J at the j it had to reverse the call and get out of coming down in my, and by the way, for a few years, I was sore in my temples, literally physically sore. So I know that a lot of sickness and disease comes from demons. I was literally sore, you could touch the soreness. And that uh, hung on for quite a few years, quite a few years. I would, sometimes I would feel it, I just touch, touch you and say in the name of Jesus, amen. And uh, I don't feel nothing now. But uh, for, for many years, uh, I was sore there from that encounter. So go with me to James 2, 19 and 20. All of this is to get you to believe that Jesus Christ came for a reason. Amen. And it says here, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. See, they know. The devils know, but human beings don't know. Amen. And it says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you, it's not more than just saying, yes, I believe, now I'm scared, and I believe. Well, you start seeking him. Start uh, uh, downloading some of these videos and, some, and looking at these preachers that you despise and can't stand and think we're stupid and, and foolish and all that. You better start listening to some of us. Amen. So that uh, you won't end up in desolation and utterly consumed by terrors believe now because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord of things in earth on earth in heaven and under the earth those demons bowed at the name of jesus that came out of my mouth they bowed they let go they shoot and they reversed the call at the name of jesus God, God is highly exalting him and giving him a name that's above every name. And there's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. You need to be saved. Amen. So now go with me to uh, John 20. I want to share something with you. John 20, uh, Doubting Thomas. Now, I... I'm sure I doubted God. I know I did. I, I was like, I wanted to believe, but I mean, I, just like everybody else, it's hard to believe something you can't see. And so, but God didn't put Thomas down and he didn't put me down either. And he's not going to put you down either. But this is what happened. John 20 and 24. We're going to go there. John 20 and 24. It says, um, but Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. This is when Jesus was resurrected. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. This is after Jesus rose and walked the earth for 40 days. Excuse me. In a resurrected body, a glorified body. Uh, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. That's what Thomas said. He said, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe he rose from the dead, even though Jesus told him. And he walked with, with the Lord for three years or 
I don't know how many years, but he was one of the 12. And uh, he said, I won't believe. Uh, 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. This is the resurrected Jesus. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus showed him his hand, the nail, uh, the hands with the nail scars in them and his side with the hole in it and said, go on and touch, put your, put your finger in there because I want you to believe. And so uh, he did that to doubting Thomas. He did something to doubt his Thomas that uh, other people, uh, he didn't do. He let him see. He wanted him to see. Amen. And he didn't put him down. And then Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And so that's where I'm coming from. God has revealed a lot to me. He really has. And because he reveals a lot to me and has done such great things in me, and there's much more, much more that I don't need to tell you. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know, believe. But because he has revealed these things to me, I believe. In fact, I am beyond believing. I know that I know that I know as my great pastor, Phil Godot, taught me years ago, that I know 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 that I know. I am beyond believing. These are things that I know. I don't need anyone to convince me. God has already convinced me. I've already seen. But even greater than that are those of you who have not seen and believed. You don't have to have the encounters that I have to believe. Just believe what for the work's sake. Believe it. Amen. So I'm going to read that one more time to you. This is John 20 and 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. And so, yes, I believe because God has done such great things. But if you believe, if God has not done these great things, you are blessed just to believe what um, what he's done to me. I'm a witness. That's, that's all I am. I'm a witness. He chose me uh, for such things. Go to Mark 115 with me. Mark 115. Hallelujah. And, and understand that all of these things that God did to me, I wasn't seeking them. He did it sovereignly and supernaturally. Amen. He just chose me for that. And I'm not the only one. There's other people too. It's just that times are so short and, and unpredictable that I, I just had to tell my part of my testimony because I just don't know uh, if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I hope I'm going to be here 30 more years. <laughs> but I don't know. So I have, to, I have to get it out. So Mark 1 and 15 says... This is Jesus speaking and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent means to change your mind and believe the gospel. And you think some, some of us, we're saying this to get money or we're saying this for whatever reasons that you think that we're preaching to you. And I know there's been a lot of abuse. There's been a lot of abuse, but I'm not coming from that aspect. I'm coming from the aspect that God loves you and sent his son to die for you, to save you. There's no other name given uh, under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. No other name. God has highly exalted him. And at the name of Jesus, 
Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord and he came to save you. Amen. I'm going to give you uh, one more. Well, in uh, John 10, 7 through 9, Jesus says, I am the door. I am the door. No man can come to God but by me. In John 14 and 6, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the door. He's the way out of this mess. He's the one that can keep you. See, I'm not worried. Uh, a true, any, there's no true Christian that's worried about what's going to happen. Our salvation is sealed when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He sealed it for us. If we were to, if a lightning was to strike us or a fire come and burn, uh, or, or something was to get us today, those that believe are going straight to heaven just like that. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. But if you die without Jesus, you're going to be utterly consumed with terrors. There'll be desolation and no hope. And your knees will bow and your tongue confess because you're going to see on the other side at judgment day. But then it's too late. So you must do this now. Now I want to take you to a scripture that everyone is familiar with. And these are our last scriptures in John 3. These are our last scriptures. Everyone's familiar with this. They have them on the... Well, they used to have them there. I don't know if they have them there now. But on these uh, baseball fields, uh, soccer fields, uh, these sports fields. John 3.16. But what does it mean? It means a lot. It's real. Amen? So I'm going to read John 3.16, 17, and 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you don't have to perish. You don't have to be utterly desolate. Amen. Consumed with terrors. You can have everlasting life. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. A lot of you, when you hear us preachers telling you about Jesus, you automatically put up your defense. He's not come to, to condemn you. We're already, the sin nature condemned us. He's come to get us off of that road of condemnation. He came to save us. Let me read that one more time. This is John 3, 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. One more, verse 18. He that believeth on him, meaning Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's why the Lord said, repent and believe. You don't want to continue in this earth putting your hope in this man or that man or not believing. Don't be unbelieving. There is a God. There is a heaven. There is a devil. There is a hell. There is a lake of fire. Every word in the Bible is true. It's all true. I've told you a little bit of my testimony. I went through it fast and I'm, I'm not going to be uh, uh, trying to write in a book and all that. I just want some of you to believe and be saved. Amen. And there's so much more. After you believe, you need to be taught. And so you can download these videos, Word Out Outreach. You There's so many uh, good preachers and teachers out there. There's a lot of charlatans. There's a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. There's a lot of mess. But there's more with us than against us. Amen. And, and God called us and chose us to save you. And I pray, let me say a prayer for you. Father, I thank you and I praise you. In the name of Jesus, that those that hear the words that came out of my mouth today, Lord God, your words and the testimony that you put in me, Lord God, that, uh, Lord God, your words shall not return unto you void, but they shall uh, accomplish that which you set them out to do. I pray that you cause the people that heard them that uh, to uh, 
respond to this irresistible grace, to irresistible holiness, Lord God. I pray that you, call, you cause them to hunger and thirst after righteousness so that they shall be filled, Lord God. I, call, I, I pray, Lord God, that you would cause them to do like I did, turn on that Christian radio, turn on Christian TV, uh, open up some of them Christian books, listen with with uh to listen to hear what thus says the lord i pray that they believe lord god i come against the devil right now in the name of jesus and i command you in the name of jesus to loose your your hands your scales of blindness off of the eyes of the unbelievers so that they might all see the glorious gospel of jesus christ i thank you lord god for this day for helping me to share my testimony in jesus mighty name that some might believe and be saved. Amen. Now, again, I'll try to always end these uh, lessons with being COVID. It's going to get worse. Listen to the experts, the scientists. You do your social distancing, uh, wear your masks, and wash your hands, wash down your surfaces. I, ha I have new babies in my family that I have not seen. Because like I said, I'm 71, I have this gospel in me, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to die, I can die any day, but I have this gospel. I have this message, I have these words that I cannot foolishly be out there and not allow God to use me. I will not tempt the Lord thy God, in Jesus' name. So uh, stay alive so that God can use you. There are so many people. Uh, Jesus is the door. And that's actually the title of this message. Jesus is the door. There's so many of you that God wants to use. And uh, when they come to you, they're going to start coming to all of us looking for answers. And when they come to you, preach Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. There's so much that we are preaching that's uh, superficial. We've got to start telling them about Jesus. They can't. Uh, God showed me a dream where they were trying to, the people are coming, 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 and they're trying to pick at the door and saw at the door and trying to bam the door. You can only come through Jesus. And that's only if you believe. Belief opens the door. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Amen. God bless you all.